The U.S. says it hopes to resume a denuclearization talks with North Korea despite Pyongyang's anger at Washington's continued war games in the region. U.S. State Department said that Washington looked forward to resuming negotiations, but will this time try to make... Trying to make up progress that is part <clears throat> quietly and behind the scenes. The remarks come while North Korea accuses the U.S. of breaching the spirit of negotiations by planning a new round of joint military exercises with South Korea. Pyongyang says drills are a rehearsal for war. North says it's gradually losing justifications to follow through earlier commitments made with Washington. And joining us now for this news review is Jennifer Chang, our Press TV correspondent, joining us out of Seoul, Korea, and Jason Unruhe, political commentator and analyst, joining us out of Ontario, Canada. Welcome you both to the program. Now, if I could, uh, Jennifer, give us the latest what we know, right, reactions pouring in now. Well, of course, the North Koreans are no fools. They know that the upcoming exercise scheduled from August 5th to the 23rd is a rehearsal for invasion. It could be a surprise attack. That's what they called it when they issued their two statements saying that they are not going to put up with the U.S. not keeping its promises of suspending its military drills here on the Korean Peninsula with the South Korean military. This was one of the agreements reached at the first U.S.-North Korea summit last year in June between President Trump and the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. And the North made it clear that the two leaders had also recommitted to that mutual agreement of the U.S. and South Korea suspending their military exercises in exchange for a freeze on North Korea's nuclear and long-range missile tests, which of course the U.S. fears greatly because if a long-range missile can carry a nuclear warhead to the U.S., which U.S. experts recently said is the case from North Korea, then that means that that gives tremendous leverage over the U.S. Uh, on Pyongyang's part. And so the U.S. is determined to stop any long-range missile testing by Pyongyang. But Pyongyang is hinting that it will resume its long-range missile tests and its nuclear tests, which are being done to show the U.S. that it is advancing its capability all the time, every day. Now, of course, the South Korean intelligence agency has not spotted any suspicious activity at its long-range missile testing site in the northwest of North Korea, nor has it seen any kind of suspicious activity at its missile research center outside Pyongyang. But the North can easily resume its nuclear and missile testing. In the failed Hanoi summit in February, it agreed to dismantle its Yongbyon nuclear reactor. Earlier, it had agreed to dismantle its Dongchangli missile engine testing site. But all of these uh, offers were rejected by the Trump administration. And of course, the North blamed the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton. Uh, U.S. President Trump appears to have been swayed by those two at the Hanoi summit. And one day before North Korea issued the two statements on Tuesday saying that it is going to resume its nuclear and missile testing because this has not been committed to paper, and the U.S.-South Korea military alliance exercises have not been committed to paper by Washington, so it feels it can go ahead with them. Just one day before it issued those two statements, Mike Pompeo went on the air on Fox News with Sean Hannity and said he would like North Korea to come to the negotiating table in the upcoming working level talks between the U.S. and North Korea with some creative ideas, with some differences from what they did in Hanoi which obviously upset the North Koreans because they want a step-by-step -step denuclearization process. And one of the problems with Hanoi is that Trump 
uh, demanded a large deal where the North Koreans would just give up all their nuclear and missile programs, their chemical, biological weapons programs for the sanctions relief that is strangling their economy and preventing them from going into the economic development. And on June 30th, just 16 days ago, ago uh, before the North Koreans issued the statements, the two statements, just 16 days before that, the two were seemingly going to do that with working level talks, you know, make some kind of agreement where they could go step by step. But now the U.S. is not keeping its side of the deal. They are again, you know, indicating, Mike Pompeo is indicating on Fox News that he doesn't like that step-by-step -step approach. He wants fully verified denuclearization, final denuclearization. He wants the big deal. And that obviously upset the North Koreans. And now the working level talks are in jeopardy, as well as the whole U.S.-North Korea denuclearization agreement. Okay, thank you for that update, Jennifer. I'm going to swing over to you now, Jason. It seemed like such, you know, nice, I mean, pretty much unprecedented progress was made between Trump and Kim Jong-un. So why wasn't the Trump administration able to seize the moment? What happened to that momentum? Well, I, I frankly, I think this is due to the very... Um indecisive manner in which Donald Trump leads the United States. One day he says one thing and then another he says the complete opposite. Uh, he says that there will be fire and fury and then the next day it's where we can get along and hammer out a peace deal. There seems to be no ideological consistency to this president uh, seemingly at, at any point in time. I think it's, it is fair to say that he's probably being pulled in many directions and he's not putting his foot down and making a decision as to what the U.S. policy is going to be. I, I, I am reminded of when George, George W. Bush called himself the great decider, and that's what the president is supposed to be. He's supposed to be the one that takes in all the information from his advisors, diplomats, etc., and then plots down a course as to what the country is going to do in all matters, uh, particularly and probably most importantly, that in in foreign relations. And that's not what we have been seeing from this president who frequently flip-flops back and forth depending on what his mood is and according to um, many insider publications, depending on who it is, the last person that he even spoke to. And this is uh, probably very frustrating for the DPRK who has to sit there and wonder uh, which Donald Trump are they going to deal with today? The one who wants who wants a deal to parade around as his greatness or the one that wants to invade them and destroy them? This is uh, very difficult to be diplomatic with someone who is so completely inconsistent. At least if he was just completely hostile, they would know how to deal with it. If he was very... Uh, and conforming, then they would know how to deal with that too. But the fact that he keeps going back and forth between the two makes it very difficult for the DPRK to diplomatically handle the situation. And that's exactly what this is. The DPRK has tried numerous times to come to a reasonable, rational deal where uh, both sides can carefully take steps towards a peaceful situation between the two countries. But then as soon as they come to some kind of uh, unofficial agreement, the United States, or particularly U.S. President Donald Trump, turns around and just completely sabotages the entire thing with an act like this, uh, having the but why, uh, Jay? Down military exercises. But, 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 but why? I mean, what's wrong with this? It sounds like the most logical thing would be this kind of diplomacy or this kind of process. Give a little, get a little, give a little, give a little. I mean, get a little. So, I mean, this, it's a great process proposed by the North. Why, why would the North, or why would the U.S., for that matter, think that any other, it, it think, you know, any, any other method could suffice? I mean, why would the North completely break down its nuclear missile program if it's to get nothing to, toward the very end of it? And, and then what if the U.S. does, especially after what it saw with the Iran nuclear accord, there is really no credibility coming out of Washington right now. 
Uh, no, frankly, there is no credibility, and it's the way the United States has been able to act for decades. Uh, they've been able to make whatever demands that they want, and everybody will bow to them right away, or there's going to be consequences to them. We saw this with the this ongoing situation with tariffs with various countries around the world. The U.S. demands immediate obedience, and they see it as nothing short of weakness to engage in any kind of give-and-take style situation, because uh, they have been the unquestioned uh, military and economic power of the world for a number of decades. And with that kind of power comes that kind of arrogance to believe that not only do they have, uh, do they have the power to do so, but they have the right to do so as well. And before we go, Jennifer, really quick, in less than a minute, have we, I mean, when was the last time we saw this much, pretty much willingness out of the North? I mean, I don't remember really when we did, but this is a great opportunity that could be passed up during the Trump administration, isn't there? Oh, this is yeah, a tremendous situation for peace that they're, they're really... Uh, that, that message, uh, that, that question was for uh, Seoul. Uh, Jennifer Chang over there. Sorry, uh, Jay, real quick. Go ahead, Jennifer. Uh, that was a tremendous opportunity that's being messed up by the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, because for Donald Trump, it's a tremendous opportunity to be reelected. I mean, the American public gives him so much credit for all the progress he made in diplomacy with the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, and he would like to be reelected. Many people say this is a show that he is doing with the North Korean leader, this stepping into North Korea on June 30th so he can get reelected next year as U.S. president. And then after he gets reelected, then he might even invade North Korea because he's been reelected. And he doesn't need the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, anymore. And North Korea knows that. So when they see this big military drill going on next month with this hardline U.S. commander here in South Korea who commands all the U.S. forces, who advocates invading North Korea if the North doesn't denuclearize, they know that there could be a surprise attack, that the U.S. might invade them, might attempt some kind of surgical strike okay. on their nuclear missile facilities, for instance. We're out of time. I want to thank you both for joining us. Jennifer Chang, that is out of Seoul and Jason Unruhe joining us out of Ontario, Canada. Viewers, that's a wrap for the segment of your Press TV's News Review. Thanks for tuning in and goodbye for now.